Hey, thanks for joining me on this video. What I wanted to discuss today is if I was going to give you your first guitar lesson, what would I tell you? Some essential things that you would need to know. I'll tell you, uh, I would start out by giving you the introduction to the guitar. Basically what I would tell you is, if you've never played a guitar before, you may not know the difference between an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar. Now these two guitars, um, are, you play them similarly because the, uh, the frets, frets, and not only the frets, but just the way that the, the theory behind it, the musical notes are all pretty much the same. What's different about these acoustic guitars as opposed to electric guitars is that acoustic guitars have this full body on them and they generate their own sound. The sound comes out of this hole right here, this sound hole, where an electric guitar requires an amplifier, like something like that behind me. And these pickups, these magnetic pickups, basically hear the frequency of the string that's being made and it travels through a chord and it goes to the amp and the amplifier amplifies that sound. So this is an electric guitar and this is an acoustic guitar. Now there are some folks who tell you you know, what should I do? What should I, should I play an acoustic guitar first or should I play an electric guitar? My suggestion to you is play whatever you have. My first guitar was, uh, it was in my, in my shed and we live out here in Florida. And then the, uh, the guitar, the strings were so high, it felt like playing telephone wires, but it was my first guitar. And uh, I really did want to learn how to play it, but playing something that was that bad did not help me <laughs> progress at, at all. I had to uh, actually beg and plead for my dad to buy me one, and eventually he did buy me one for my birthday. So I got an acoustic, so I'm used to playing the acoustic uh, most of the time. And if you are having an acoustic guitar, or if you have an electric guitar, all these principles are basically the same for you just beginning to get, when you get started. So um, I would tell you first how to tune the guitar. Now um, this guitar is tuned to certain notes. Um, I won't get into all the theory as to the separation or the intervals between one string to the next, but you have to understand that the anatomy of the guitar is that there's metal, these metal strings, and there's this wood body. The same thing with an electric guitar. These strings are under a great amount of tension. So they're held together here, and this would be considered the bridge, and these are the bridge pegs, or and this is the saddle, and these are the strings. This is the body of the guitar. This is the neck and this is the headstock. These are the tuning machines that you actually spin these. If you can see real closely, see how the strings are oriented so that when you have the strings that you want to make sure, and I see this all the time, you want to make sure that those strings are on the inside of that tuning machine on the inside here. Not on the outside, I see that all the time. It gets really, really confusing when you tune. That's important because what I'm gonna show you now is that these strings, there's six of them, and it's this open string here is E, then A, then D, then G, then B, then E. I, I tell students all the time, use this uh, mnemonic device, elephants and donkeys grow big ears. So elephants and donkeys grow big ears. Now the, the strings are one through six, so the top string is actually six, and the bottom string, the high string, it's real thin, is a one. That's how I remember one, because the, the string is real thin. When you're tuning, here's the deal. So this is a, a chromatic tuner. Um, you can get one on your phone. If you don't have one, you can get one for free, but if you wanna buy one of these, they're, they're fairly cheap, 15 bucks and they clip on the guitar. They're pretty pretty steady. Uh, in a loud environment, they don't work as well, but when you're practicing, um, you wanna make sure that you find a place that you can practice and have a really good time uh, by yourself, basically. like So you can have this uh, environment for you to be able to practice and, and play whatever notes so that you don't feel that you're under pressure. Right? So when you tune the guitar, I'm gonna put this thing right here so you can see that is Green meaning it's good. So that's E, elephants, A, and donkeys. Oh wait, but it didn't glow green. So that means that this string is, is a little sharp. So what I'll do is I'll tune it K. 
uh, clockwise in order to make it a little bit uh, less sharp. Let's make it right on that, that D. There it is. Then we move to G. Looks good. B. Looks good. E. It looks good. All right. So that's a way for us to be able to tell that this guitar now is in tune, right? So when you're holding your guitar, um, you want to make sure, especially if you're sitting down, that your posture is good. So I'm going to turn sideways. So in the chair that I'm sitting in, I can lean back, but I don't want to do that. I want to sit forward a little bit and I want to have that guitar seated right on this, um, right here on my thigh and it's resting very comfortably. And there is a little bit of a neck dip, meaning that the, the headstock begins to slide, slide down. That's just the way that some guitars are, especially acoustics. So you always want to make sure you hold it and, and, and protect the headstock, which is down here, and hold the neck. And then sit comfortably whenever you're uh, looking at something, especially uh, music. Always make sure you have it like up higher and angled. Um, there is a statistic that says you're 20% more likely to, to play a little bit longer than you would be, um, or actually the, the, the statistic is if you were to practice with an elevated, uh, like a music stand or something like that, then you would be able to practice 20% longer than you would without it. So it's a little tip there, but it, it really does help because it helps with neck strain. Um, I have a lot of uh, people every once in a while leaning over the guitar like this and just being really uncomfortable. That is not a good posture. Because the acoustic guitar or the electric guitar is a very physical instrument. So you have it against your body and it resonates and it makes this, this, this beautiful sound, but you can feel it. Your body actually, actually feels that, uh, those notes that, that you make. So that's tuning of the guitar. That's the general outline of what the guitar is. Now you have your hands, right? So you've got, um, these things on your, on your hands called fingers. Now they're, they're not just called the index and the middle and the ring, they're actually numbered. So your left hand is one, two, three, four, and T for thumb. That's gonna be important later on when you're learning about uh, chord diagrams. Now if you're learning finger picking, there's also other names for the right hand, but we're not gonna worry about that because predominantly what you'll have is you'll have a pick in your hand. Now there's, thousands and thousands of different types of picks. This one in particular is a triangle pick. Um, it's a, has a relatively thick, it's a 0.73 millimeters, which means that's the thickness. There are some that are 1.0, 1 1.3. 1 uh, there are some that are really, really fl uh, flimsy. I've just grown to like this type of pick. You can choose whatever it is that you want whatever is comfortable, especially if you're learning as a beginner. You probably want to have it uh, a little bit stiffer, but not too thin, because what happens is the, the pick bends so hard, it gets stuck kind of in the strings. So here you have your pick. Now your pick posture, I'll turn this way, is um, how would you hold it? So if you were to take your hands like this, and you were to take the pick this way and hold it, kind of like that, like kind of short. And then if you were just to rotate it just a little bit, so it pretends like it's your index finger. So it's your index finger like this, and then hold it like that, and then relax your thumb, relax your hands, relax your fingers, and you'll be going in an up and down direction. That's a very crude way of describing it, but that's what you should do. So now, what I want you to do is I don't want you to play a chord just yet. That's for a later video. This is just to get you oriented. This would be the first way that you'd be playing. And I would tell you to go ahead and play the top E string and to pluck it and to pluck it down. So there's a downward stroke. There's down and up. So I would take the, pl uh, the pick or if you're from uh, our friends over in uh, Western Europe, they call it a plectrum. You take your pick and just go down and just make a solid sound with the, the top E string. I wouldn't make a chord yet, we're just making the note, the E. Then try the A. Then the D. And really look as you dig, G, B, B, 
and then E. And then strum it. Mute it. Right? So this finger, these hands, this pick will dig up and down on these strings. Not too hard and not too soft. And you'll kind of go in like an arc kind of motion. So it's kind of like this as opposed to up and down like this. No. You want to make sure your wrist is nice and loose and your elbow and your shoulder especially. I've been playing for a long time and I find that when I tense up, my shoulder gets so tight, especially up by my neck. So you want to make sure that you're nice and relaxed. If you feel any pain at any time, go ahead and stop and come back to it. My advice, just getting started, somewhere between five and 10 minutes, go ahead and play and then put it down for a while. Then, so we've talked about the guitar itself. We talked about how to tune it. We've talked about basic posture, hand placement, what the numbers are on your hands, especially your left hand. Here's your first chord. Are you ready? Here it is. So um, I'm going to show it to you, even though I said I wasn't, but I'm going to do it anyways because I think it's fun. So you take your index finger or the one finger. Now on the guitar um, itself, these are the individual strings. So there's an X axis, meaning like going this way, and a Y up and down. So what I want you to do is take your index finger and put it on the second fret on the A string or the fifth string. So take your index finger, place it there, and take your middle finger and put it on the fourth string on the second fret. So it's, it's right there. Now, hold it there, and if this is the first time you're ever making a chord, it's gonna feel really hard. It's gonna feel like really uncomfortable, and that's because your fingers don't have calluses built up in order to be able to get used to pressing down hard on these strings. So this E minor chord, let's go ahead and try to make that E minor chord. So the index finger, number one finger, is on the second fret on the fifth string, and the third finger, or this, excuse me, the second finger, which is the two, or your middle finger, is holding on, th on the, the fourth string. And then strum all the way down. Now your first drum probably won't sound like that. It might sound something like this. So what will happen is you'll get used to playing the E minor chord, nice and gentle, kind of like uh, petting a dog. You don't pet a dog real hard. You, you pet a dog real nice and gentle. Same thing with your fingers. Be kind to your fingers. I actually have a video on, um, on how to overcome finger pain. Um, I'll link that uh, in the, in, down below, but it's very simple on how to be able to do that. But this is the E minor chord. Now, great. So you've done your first chord and now there's several things. There's three things in particular that you need to be able to master, right? The first thing is knowing your chords. So creating a chord vocabulary, knowing what the chords are, number one. The second is rhythm and strumming. So pretend that the guitar is a rhythmic instrument because you don't have to like think too hard about how percussive this thing sounds. So there's the melody and there's the rhythm. So the rhythm is in this hand and up and down mo and movements. And the melody is in your left hand. So you have the making the chords and making them nice and clean, like an E minor. Then you have the rhythmic pattern of playing those chords. And then being the next thing, the third thing, is being able to make that transition from one chord to the next. So let's review that for a second. The first thing you need to make sure you do is begin to understand how to make the chords properly. Make them nice and clean. Then the next thing you need to be able to do is to play rhythmic patterns that fit the song, up and down patterns. Those, that's for later on. And the third thing is to be able to position yourself in a way to be able to play chords in the progression. So you're not, all, uh, you're not always going to stay right here. You're going to move around. So being able to create positions along the guitar to make your life a lot easier. Uh, some of the greatest guitar players that I know of, um, they, they don't really look like they're doing much, but they are doing amazing things like Julian Lodge or uh, Tommy Emanuel is one of my favorite acoustic guitar players. Like he's just, he's working so hard um, making this beautiful music, but it looks like he's not really doing anything, but he's definitely working. Everything is working at the, at the same time. 
So if you're like just wanting to learn how to play a song, this is great for you. And if you can kind of sing, that's okay. Um, if you can't sing at all, that's okay too. You can still hum songs. You don't, you're not limited by your vocal ability to be able to play, play the guitar. So that was just a bit of encouragement uh, to you. So with that, I wanted to leave you with this. Don't give up. Uh, I read recently that most guitar players who, who start out, uh, within 90 days, they quit. They just stop. And it's, I think there's a reason for it. There's a lot of frustration. You see a lot of things on social media where guitar players are just incredible and they're just shredding and doing all this crazy stuff. And it, and it kind of feels really, really in, intimidating. Uh, it's kind of like going into the gym and looking at these, for guys, it's like some of these guys are huge and they're lifting all this weight. Well, it didn't happen overnight. It happened years and years and years. The same thing is with guitar. There's a discipline there. Be patient, not only patient, but also practice. Like. But when you're practicing, play musically. And that's what I tell my students all the time. And that's how I play. I don't really practice drills. I do skills and drills, but then I also do my drills melodically. Like I try to create music as opposed to just practicing all these uh, individual rudiments and things like that. So I hope that helps you. Um, I'm one of many voices out there, um, but if this really helped you and this guy gave you a good start, uh, we'll make more videos like this. Go ahead, give it a, a thumbs up and hit subscribe and we'll have more videos like this in the future and we'll see you next time.